to this evening. I'd like to start by just saying that KZN Women in Action is not necessarily politically aligned. So you're welcome, whether you, whichever party you align with yourself with, uh, whichever religion you are, whichever walks of life you are, we just want all women to unite together. We're stronger together. And besides, we are the leaders of society. We are the nurturers. We are the ones who are the rudder that is keeping us straight in the storm that we're going through as a country. So as women, it's really important that we work together um, on our own with our political affiliations and just be able to push women issues forwards, uh, for example, like gender-based violence um, and just help each other out. I think it's, it's very sad that we are in these different silos when we are so much stronger together, but divided, we shall definitely fall. Now, uh, this reminds me a little bit of uh, a Greek myth written by Aristophanes called Lysistrata. At the time, all the women were very upset in Athens and Greece. <laughs> and they were upset because the men were going to war and they were always fighting and they were never resolving anything. So then the women thought, okay, this is about ego now. How are we as women as a society going to stop this? Because we don't go to war. We don't fight. We have other weapons. Right. So then in the dead of night, they all met in a cave and they discussed what they were going to do. All the women in Athens were going to stop doing any wifely duty, if you know what I mean. It didn't take longer than a month. The men couldn't handle the women not doing what they felt women should do in society. Society was falling apart. Women were not cooperating. The war ended. Everything was peaceful. The sons returned from war. The husband returned from war. So even in a myth from Greece years ago, they knew that women together, united, are extremely powerful. Now, as I move on from that, I want to talk about really why we're here. We are here to celebrate women who are the giants on shoulders with which we sit on now. Women who sacrifice, who are activists, women who are heroes, women who are warriors. And maybe through the years, people have, may have forgotten or the younger generation may not know, but, but there are women who without you would not be here. You would not have the opportunities and you would not feel as brave as you feel now. So these women need to be celebrated. And I just feel so much gratitude. I feel so much honor to be part of this. And I hope you feel the same way too. And to the families who've joined us, thank you so much. Um, you know, the women in your families have really made history. And all we can say is thank you. And thank you is not even enough. So because I'm dramatic, I am uh, going to perform to you um, a short poem, more like recited. And I feel like every bit of the poem will touch some woman in some way. So the poem is called Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. <clears throat> you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with the glue? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like the moons and like the tides with a certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head, lowered eyes, shoulders falling like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't take it all for hard, because I laugh <laughs> like I've got gold mines digging in my backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll 
rise. Now, does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as no surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the hut of history shame, I rise. Willing and swelling, I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise into the daybreak that's wondrously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise. All right. Thank you very much for letting me do my poem for you. Um, next, uh, our first speaker is going to be uh, Musi and Jingila, Jingila, and she's going to be doing the opening remarks. She's going to be telling us more about these ladies, the history behind it, what, what they all did and what they contributed, whereas maybe some of us don't really know. And also just to just sort of honor them and their glory and their activism and their strength. Sure. So, so Busi, take it away. Okay. Uh, good evening, distinguished guests. And firstly, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to share your afternoon with us on this wonderful landmark event. My name, as Nelly has said, is Busi Siwen Jingila. And um, I am a mother, like most of you, a sister, a wife, a friend. I am a patriot, a budding entrepreneur, and I have so much love and passion for this country. And I am so inspired by these women that we're going to honor today mm -hmm. because like most of us, they loved South Africa and they wanted to see a free, fair, and better South Africa for all of us. So we could not have chosen a better day where we, as KZN women, we accept the challenge. We choose to challenge and, for, and, and continue where they have left off. So what I'm going to do is I'll give you a brief overview of most of the women and what they have uh, done to move South Africa forward and to put KZN as a landmark province. Firstly, we have Fatima Mir. Fatima Mir was an academic, a screenwriter, a social justice and anti-apartheid activist. She was one of the first women to be elected in the Natal Indian Congress. She was in and out of detention due to her political activism. She was extremely influential in the Indian com community. She was also the author of Trial of Andrew Zondo, who was Zondo, who was executed in death row. She founded the first executive committee of the Federation of South African Women, which organized the first anti-pass march in 1956. And she not only did that for her fellow comrades, but she also assisted Durbanites who were oppressed by the municipality in that day. She chose to challenge, she stood up, she was counted, and that's why today we honor her. Secondly, we've got Ofrene Chinwala. Okay, my apologies. Secondly, we've got Ukukuzamini. Ukukuzamini was a South African woman from Kwamwenza, a town in KwaZulu Natal. She unfortunately was stoned to death after she, had, she spoke out on local radio that she was HIV positive. Though we remember her for this single event, her struggle and her fight began long prior to this horrible event. She was a volunteer field worker for the National Association of people living with HIV and AIDS. She died for a cause that she believed in. And still today, when you're in Durban, in um, workshop mall, you see the remembrance of her. And she is always kept in our heart.
next we have now finally <laughs> Freni Jinwala. She is a known speaker for coming out and speaking the truth. She is an accomplished academic, a social justice activist, the first speaker of the South African government. President Thabo Mbeki appointed her on the 30th of September 2007 as, as Deputy Minister of Defense. Sorry, on the 30th of September 2007 to conduct an inquiry into the National Director of Public Prosecution, Vusi Pikoli, into Vusi Pikoli's fitness to hold office. She decided generally in favor of Pikoli, but criticized poor communication between the departments. She also criticized the, the Director General of the Department of Justice and Con Constitutional Development, Advocate Menzi Simela, whose testimony was contradictory and without any basis in fact of law. She was extremely critical of Jacob Zuma and his subsequent appointment of Simalani to National Director of Public Prosecution, despite her adverse findings. Typical to us women, we may find ways of saying things, but we always stand firm on what we believe. And she never hid how she felt. She was open and spoke clearly on what her findings were and that she had adverse findings against him. Next, we have Ujabun Jofu. Jabun Jofu hails from PMB. She was a shop steward with NOMSA. She was firstly a worker, she was not involved in politics, but she took the call to come to action and work towards helping South Africa. When the union came to her workplace, she decided to get involved to fight this horrible regime that we were living under. She was dearly loved by her community. Not only was she involved in politics, but she also helped to fight for her community in Imbali to get justice. And unfortunately, in 1989, she was torched, she was burnt in her house. Mm -hmm. And not only did this affect her, but her children and her husband. With us women, we carry a very difficult burden. When involved in politics, it doesn't affect us alone. It affects our husbands and our children. Not only did the family lose out on a phenomenal woman, but the entire community of Imbai. Next. We have another phenomenal woman. Next screen, please. Okay, my apologies on that. Uh, we've done, uh, Fatima Mia, can we have the next screen, please? Technology is not working with us today. <laughs> okay, I will just carry on reading in the interest of time. We also have a young lady by the name of Kopu Masuku. She was a phenomenal young person who took the call at a very young age. She was just in grade 11 when she decided to stand up against the apartheid regime. She was a student at Georgetown High School in Peter Maritzburg. And in 1989, she was assassinated and buried in her school uniform. Her life had just begun, but it was brutally cut off. She didn't have time to create memories or a photographic footprint. And she was mourned even without any photographs left of her at her funeral. Her courage and memory lives on in our hearts. Though young, she was courageous and accepted the challenge to fight for a better South Africa. We also have Joan Kershaw. She is a poet, a social justice activist, 
and one of the founders of the Peter Marisburg Association for Christian Awareness. It was founded in 1979 to draw attention to the white Christians to get involved in the struggle against apartheid. It was it published information about incidents of violence by the apartheid government that they had hidden. Many victims of, violence, of the violence found refuge at PACSA for medical care, counseling, and support. Her husband was also involved and a co-founder in this organization. And he was often harassed and detained because of his work against the apartheid violence. Post 1994, PACSA continues to raise awareness within churches and community structures on issues of social justice with a strong emphasis on human rights and building active citizenship. We also have Uno Zizwe Rutledge Matala. She was the president of the National Organization of Women, an anti-apartheid movement in the 1980s. She was in and out of detention centers due to her political activism. She is a former ANC MP, Deputy Minister of Defense, and Deputy Minister of Health. President Thabo Mbeki dismissed her from cabinet on 8 August 2007 for being vocal against HIV AIDS denialism that existed at that time. On the 25th of September, 2008, she became the Speaker of the National Assembly, serving in the capacity until resigning from Parliament completely. In early, 2000, in early 2009, May, she refused to be silent. She is well known for helping combat AIDS in South Africa in and is considered by many to have resisted government's denialism in this severe pandemic. We also have Victoria Mwege. She was a human rights lawyer and also an anti-apartheid activist. She lived in Umlazi. She was brutally assassinated together with her husband in 1985 for her political mm -hmm. activism. She was a midwife, a nurse, an attorney, in 2006, she was posthumously awarded the National Order of the Order of the Lutuli in Silva for her excellent contribution in the fight against apartheid and the, and the oppression system that it was using. Her, sacrifice, her sacrifices and contributions for the contributions to the field of law. Her memory still lives on through various organizations that honor all the hard work that she did in the legal field. Then we also have Mary de Haas. Mary de Haas is a, a social justice activist based in KZN. She has become synonymous with reporting and researching the political violence and assassinations that were taking place in KZN. She is a formidable woman and goes where many fear to enter. A qualified social worker, a principal in a children's home in Durban. She is a scholar and has outstanding research. She has also expanded her research into interventionist work on violence and human rights abuse. She is a founding member of the Medical Rights Advocacy Network and does work on behalf of patients and medical professions. Last but not least, we have Uzanele Magwazam Sibi. She is the founder of the National Freedom Front Party. Most of us here were alive to see this woman. She was phenomenal. She was formidable. She was not afraid and she's well known for being courageous enough to challenge the patriarch patriarchal system within the IFP. This led to her breakaway and formed her party. She is also a former South African parliamentarian who was the deputy minister of science. And sadly, 
had to resign due to ill health. South Africa was robbed of a true Mbogoto leadership. She is well known for defying all odds and bringing development in Zululand, where she was a mayor for 10 years. Her name resonates with the people. And if you ever drive in Zululand, you will hear how much people respect and adored her and appreciate all of the work that she did. We also have O Princess Mahopo, and she is from the royal house. She was born in, in 1926, she married uh, Chief Butelezi, and she did something that was unknown at the time. She ventured into an industry that many could not have considered. She is the foundation for most of our musicians today. She composed classical Zulu music. She was gifted in playing Isgubu. And many, many musicians today look up to her. Despite being raised in a culture that was oppressive to women, she continued her music even after marriage. This allowed her to contribute to the development of traditional music and many still today revere her and the work that she has done. She transcended the boundary of role. She pushed the envelope. She went into traditionally a male dominated industry yet continued to raise herself and the, the banner for Imbo Watson. And I think in looking at all of these women, we can all see one unifying attribute. They were never afraid to speak. They were never afraid to stand to the challenge. They stood up for what they believed in. They spoke out against injustice and they worked together regardless of color, creed, class, or political affiliation. They stood up and said, we want a South Africa that is better for all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Busasiwe. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, I think I learned so much from that. And one of the things that sort of spoke to me is that these women didn't have to scream. They could be polite, but not silenced. They shook the tables. And this is what we need to take as young people going forward. And everyone in the country who is unhappy with the way the country is, we should unite, we should join together. We should be courageous. Um, would you rather live as a slave with the sword to your throat? Or would you just rather live freely? And I just think we can all come together. We can all make a difference, no matter which political affiliation you are, no matter what religion you are, just as Busi has said. I think that's wonderful. And also um, to tell you that Busi is actually our provincial secretary for the KZN Women in Action and a member of the Etegweni uh, Regional Exo. Thank you so much, Busi. That was wonderful. Now, our next speaker, I met recently and have been talking to, and what a wonderful person. You know, when a person is so humble, and, and, and down to earth yet, they've achieved so much. Before I introduce this wonderful woman, I just wanna say that, you know, as South African women in particular, we're so vulnerable. And with things like gender-based violence and rape, that sort of thing, we really need to uh, have a law that is supporting us. We need a, a structure that is supporting us. We need police to be trained, to be more sensitive to people who come to report. We need uh, police to react faster. We need the judicial system to react faster because we are scared and we shouldn't be scared. And that is why I'm so excited that we have Judge Jillian Young Benson and she is an advocate of the High Court. And she's been, um, for since 2002, she's been the Joburg Society of Advocates. So this is a wonderful woman and we have so much to learn from her. So please, Jillian, take it away. Thank you so much, Nelly. Um, it's lovely to be with all of you here today. Um, and it is indeed always uh, something to celebrate when it's International Women's Day. And we remember 
um, our mothers and our grandmothers before them that have raised such strong women um, that are here today on this platform and those listening to us. We also value the men who contribute to that and look after us. Unfortunately, on Women's Day, we are reminded of the elephant in the room um, that seems to be shoved up under every political carpet um, in South Africa these days and lip service is paid um, to the fact that this has become such a problem. Gender-based violence in South Africa is profound and widespread. Uh, unfortunately, um, it does disproportionately affect our women and our girls um, as much as um, all children are affected thereby um, that end up in such unfortunate circumstances. It obviously occurs as a result of a normative role that our society has given it um, and the expectations of, of women in our society and the unequal power relations that we have. Sadly, it transcends every demographic. It's not specific to any, any race. Um, all of our, 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 our demographics are affected by GBV. And um, Nelly also quoted from Maya Angelou, um, who was obviously the most, one of the most well-known activists uh, working with the, the likes of Malcolm X. Um, and she was an incredibly prominent woman in uh, her fight. Her, you know, she was devoted um, and a tireless voice when it came to fighting GBV. And she said that without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We can't be kind, true, uh, merciful, generous, or honest. And so us as the women um, that are part of Gen, uh, Action SA, and regardless of which political um, affiliation we have, we as women of South Africa um, and in Action South Africa must work together to protect women's rights. And we have to make every effort to enhance women's security as well as that of our children. To do this, we must strengthen a gender responsive rule of law uh, by advising on law and eventually um, creating better policy reforms to deal with the, 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 this terrible situation that we face in our country. We also have to expeditiously, expeditiously enhance um, access to justice for victims of GBV. In line with, for instance, the United Nations policies, we must support accountability for conflict-related sexual and gender-based violence. Now, to do this, we ask ourselves, what is it that we can change? What have they not done um, in the last few decades in this country to eradicate the systemic uh, problem that we have? Well, first of all, we have to stop turning a blind eye to it. Uh, we must identify and adopt a policy that addresses the cause and the context of gender inequality and, uh, and establish what the root causes of the fact uh, is that GBV is so systemic. Now, by encouraging the improvement of basic um, infrastructure in this country, people think that it's not related, but it is, and it would go a long way. If we um, started, for instance, increasing the uh, budget for the police, using the money wisely, um, and increasing the effectiveness of our police services and security services in this country. Something as simple as upgrading our courtroom facilities, whether it's from the magistrate's court to the high court or the children's court, would also improve this because if we had greater capacity um, and better facilities, there would obviously be room to employ additional judicial officers and hear these cases on a faster basis and pay more attention to them. The long queues of women standing every morning at the domestic violence courts in this country is incredibly sad. Those women will be there all day after having um, been a victim of some form of violence. And it is unacceptable that they now as a victim have to stand and wait uh, for endless hours uh, for assistance. And these matters take many, many months to resolve and that should not be tolerated anymore. We, we do need to improve the justice system in that regard. Now, <clears throat> there also needs to be proper training of all of the presiding officers and I think definitely of the police on a, on a sensitivity of the sexual 
uh, nature of the, the, the violence that is meted out towards these victims. It would also, if all of these small level things were improved, it would also deter the perpetrators because they'd know that justice will be seen to be done and it will be seen to be done properly. The smallest changes, as I've said, would make the most enormous difference. For instance, if the NPA would increase their spend and pay their employees properly, it would attract dedicated legal representatives to work within the NPA, which must not be politicized, and they must be there to perform the function of prosecuting matters properly. Now, often we hear of matters where the charges are not um, uh, carried through and the prosecution is refused because of the lack of evidence. That again turns to our police. We don't have proper investigative experts in the forensic field, and where we do, we don't have enough of them. So they are overburdened and they are not um, able to properly investigate and collect the evidence that is required to sustain a proper conviction um, in due course of the perpetrators of these crimes. Now, if for instance, you knew that there is going to be a serious consequence and the, the minimum sentence for GBV is increased and properly implemented, these perpetrators will naturally be deterred and it would diminish the number of cases that we have. Now, again, we shouldn't be worried about our police, worrying about rentals of big properties and, and, and money changing hands, it shouldn't be. That money should be used to train the police. We should have rape kits at every police station and we should have people properly qualified and um, trained on how to be sensitive to these uh, violent uh, victims that come into the police stations. At the present moment, this experience is exceptionally traumatic. It's dealt with poorly and many victims are too scared uh, to go uh, and report a case because they know that they are then vict further victimized um, when doing so. So at every station, we should have qualified staff to deal with these matters properly with compassion and understanding. Then, Another place where we sorely lack protection in this regard is in our schools. Our girls do not have proper access to the things that they need at their school facilities. And it is not just merely a question of textbooks and education, which would also educate our, all of our children so to, to know that this is incorrect, it's morally offensive, and we could then raise better children to be better adults. At this point, our education system is lacking. Girls are more worried about finding sanitary towels in this country than about passing their exams. And so they miss school. It again doesn't help. It makes them vulnerable and renders them um, stuck at home uh, and not in a safer environment. Many of our schools are not safe environments for the girls either. There is a lot of bullying going on. And I don't think that we have sufficient resources to make sure that our schools are a safe space for our, for our girls. And so when I say we need to fix the very little basics at the bottom, it would go a long way to stretching up to the number of victims at the top. Thus, we are in dire need for gender responsive reform in all of our sectors in this country. It has been eroded and disregarded. And as I've said, it's a problem that just gets swept under the carpet. We need to start paying attention. And we need to, if, if nobody else will, we need to start trying to educate uh, people as to, you know, the actual seriousness of GBV in our country. Our justice system is critical in this reform process that we need to implement, and they need to provide resilient outcomes, respecting the rule of law and the respect for all human rights. As Helen Suzman once said, she said, I stand for simple justice, equal opportunity and human rights. It is the indispensable elements in a democratic society, and it is well worth fighting for. We all have to fight for those rights, and more specifically in relation to women. To quote lastly, as I conclude, uh, Fatima Mir, who is one of the ladies that we have uh, mentioned earlier today, she said, they fought because they did not want to carry a pass. I carry my past every day in my heart because as a woman, 
I can't walk freely on the streets. We can't claim our freedom as women unless we fight. And so that is what we must continue to do so that we end up in a South Africa where women are safe in the streets and our children are safe in the streets as well. And I think unless we get together to do that, nothing will change in that regard. And I hope that we can all continue um, on that journey and make some difference. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Gillian. Um, you know, it really touches my heart that so many uh, rapes and, and um, issues of violence aren't reported because the women themselves have become scared of the law, which is there to protect them, you know, and also being re-traumatized by an insensitive justice system. Uh, Absolutely. So I, I've learned so much from what, you, what you've said, and I... I think, yes, we can say the police must do this, the government must do that, but if they're not reacting fast enough, we as women have to come together. This is why uh, KZN Women in Action is so important. If we don't start doing stuff for ourselves and keep waiting, how many people must be raped? How many people must be killed? How many people must be silenced while we wait for our separate little silos or separate little pol political parties to do something about it? We have to stand up and we have to do something. So thank you so much, Gillian. Um, Gillian is also the interim uh, uh, member of the interim Senate of Action SA. Thank you, Gillian. It was very educational. Thank you. Um, our next speaker um, was supposed to be Lerato Ngobeni, and she's our National Action, Action SA um, speaker, but she's feeling very unwell. She has joined us, but she won't be able to, to speak. We just hope that you recover, Lerato, and... Um, I can't wait to do greater things with you in the future. All right. So now I'd like us to move on um, to someone who is strong, someone who is humble, someone who is dedicated, somebody who's our backbone of the KZN Women in Action. And that's our president, Monica Mugaka. She will be talking to us more about the importance of women forming a structure and how it affects society and how we actually are the backbone of society. So if we just stand up together, we can make huge changes. They can't ignore us if all of us are united in the same causes. So please welcome Monica Mugak. Watinda Bafazi, Watindi Mbogoto, power to the women, Watinda bafazi, watinda umlilo. Watinda bafazi, watindi mbogoto. Ika malami ngingumo ni kateli mpilo mkaka. Wazulu nasal, lapa imnambiti. Ngitela ukubonga, kubobonge. Aba atende, lentanga na yutia na mtlanje, ya bu mama. Situmisa usugu ulkulu, lango mtlaka eitu kumach. Lapo subunga za kona, ama heroes etu, asadlula emtlabeni. Situstela ukubonga, kubobonge, ngubasfunde, kusfunde. Bukulu born. But as bonga bong futi eh, aba pati betu, aba sas hola na manje, aba pilayo, siti siya bonga na bona si funda lukulu. Gingu kalimbilo mkaka njongo bangila nanje ku action SA, nam tlanjes kulumange KZ and women in action. City, singa makosigazi, si imbo godo, aslanga neni si demonye. Kungabe upuma Ibale limshope noma elinzundu noma enja ne oksala yo saka i rainbow nation. I rainbow nation yama koskazi imbogoto eslangene uguze sizo gwazu upegana ne inkinga eslanga bezananas. Ngoba uma si imbogoto singa slangene angege sugwazu ugulwa ne inkinga eslangana nazo singa makosgazi. Again it inje inkinga yokala mina esengenga tula ngai buga ugu tistili le onkinga iseko na singa bantu besfazani askage mugelegi. Ngoku 100%, especially Ubantu Abawoba. Basa kona laba, abanyi, abasena kuguti. Uma kuluma umduwe spazane, kuluma umduwe spazane. No matuwa angeza nendo epatega yo, eze nendo ezo waka. Kota ngoba umduwe spazane, utolo kutu 99%. Kona ba decline na ube dai, ngoba umduwe spazane, asizo leondo. Sitike na mshaya si KZN Women in Action. Si fisa singa makoska za slanga nenda wanya sibe nezo lodo. Uguti na lapo eshamba kona sikuluma kona. Shishie imaki uzwa gale. Ipele inda bayo uguti sikuwasu. Ezi singa makoska za si imbo godo. Si slangene. Uningi esi ngagwenza. Unga putula 
izweletu. Singa makosigazi, ngabe, siyazibona yinu kuti ipa yin power ise zanje mzetu. Agas kulume, ngeza ma project. Uguti umaslange ne singa makosigazi, ayiko i project ne project nge saikala, si bambe ne silanganisa izanja city, sifunu kala indi ezo wazgus pilisa, izi pilise nabanyi, si kale indo ezo wazi i project pilisa nabanyi, kes kete le si moso guti, utuwa imsebenzi ayiko. Tina si yimbo godo, si pete umnoto ezanje, kodwa umasitlangene loko si zo wenza si wazgu tespumelele. Si yimbo godo, si njalonji. Mangbiela with buying power, it buying power, it petuates in the opportunity and cool. Yogufula, as a matuba M7. An example as Zimbogoto, Aboba and Abens washing every day. It in a Zimbogot. Aboba and Awash is each every day. It in a Zimbogot. Cleaning household, Oba and Abay pet, it in a Zimbogot. Zimbogotoge, si pete. Isamba, says Mali, as and then Zet, as not Maslangana. Si susa le project si kwa zuksiza abane. Si pinde siti hivi ntina singa abane pesfazani. Si nalofuti it lunge lo noma amanza. Ogutima siti esi ipa isi nepa yi mpawa siti. Estore stile. Uma singe na kona. Inge eko. I product ne yodwa. Ya makosigazi e shelf inda liso stolo. Asinge eni. Zinga agi itolo. Ezi ngabuya zi shaili saluti. Ziti makosika azimbogoto, sasi zozo wanganige, uguti ngabe ni supplier ngani, e ntwene ni sebensayo, uguze masinge na e shop, si tole AOT product, we shelf. Gungani si imbogoto always, si supporta i product, e si tola kuma shelves, but e ngabu isi peki luto, i community. E zi singa makosika aziskati, so kala ama project, azo pay a back to community. Si nezi ndandane e zingagi, e si tala na zezi ngenabandu. Es ngati si imbo goto makita nganisi zanja. Si guazi ibi nukuna ege la izi ndandane ez ngena mundu. Indandane e ngena mundu itinga tina si imbo goto. Uma u imbo goto umduwa na nomu nga mzali o wako. Goto wangegu mbu gumtu wane strati ni shupege ngena luto e nga zimu. But si imbo goto makita ngana. Si nga ishi nja lendo si enze uguti ibu gege nge nyindle la uguti imbo goto isi sugumini. Uma si kuluma. Ngezo kutlugumezega, njeo ngoba ukoli kwa tekuluma madese kulumili. Sia kutlugumezega kakulu, e ndwene iningi. E zinye emoyeni, e zinye enyameni, e zinye ngogo mkondo. E zi endapa zipaza misa, ukukula kwa mundu wa spaza ni emkondwe. Atu mundu wa spaza ni ene potential yo kwenza izi ndo zenzeke, kote ngogo mkondu titegile, a enda penga sagu wazugu ya pambili. Ngiti viva mbogoto viva, slanga nisibe mwenye, I structure se women case that and in action. Siza ukalwa, sikonu kuslela. Sizo includa bonga besfazane, noma ilipi ibala, sigwa smuve, sibe banye, sinte e, sibe yinde yodwa. Masiti viva mbogoto, watinda bafazu, watindu mlilo. Sikuluma ngende yodwa, si rainbow nation, singa makosiga ze South Africa. Funa masugu maskuluma sibega izi, bashayi saluti, bati, sebe kulumila makosiga ze. Isi kulumili rainbow nation, bakonu kuslale. Viva rainbow nation, viva. Viva makosiga ze, viva. Lizwe ele tu singa makoskazi si peta manda aslanga ni si be muye diasbonge over to you sister Nelly. Oh thank you so much, Mamonika. You know I feel all like an activist myself now. I feel I feel excited. I feel like I can do whatever that I put my heart to. And I feel like with the support of my sisters, with the support of KZN Women in Action, we can really achieve anything. And I love what you said um, when you spoke about non-racialism. This whole uh, color thing that we keep harping on about is actually dividing us now. And you know, the divided will be conquered. Let's get past that now. Let's be an army of women who are heard. Let's not just be discriminated against and oh no, another woman is speaking. Hear our voice, hear our call, hear our cries, and hear our leadership. We are very strong. We are, we are the home builders. We are the nurturers. Some of us are entrepreneurs. Some of us are mentors. Some of us are warriors. You know, let's work together. Look at all these different skills we have and what we can do. We can solve half the problems that exist without having to include the government or anybody, just us 
together being dedicated and being a unit. Thank you so much, um, um, Monique. That was really special. Now we get to our keynote speaker. Now I could read off a list of all this beautiful woman's accomplishments. I could tell you all the struggles she's fought, but I can tell you one thing, she chose to challenge. And that is what I admire so much about her. I see her as an academic. I see her as a leader. I see her as a person who is able to lead with transparency and be ethical. What, I'm getting carried away. But ethical leadership is so important. We can't have a corrupt leadership. We can't have a corrupt country. Look at where we are now. Look where we could be. These are the sorts of leaders that we need. So with honor and humility, we are so thankful to have Dr. Makosi Koza who is our Action SA KZN chairperson. Mama Kosi, up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, program director. Um, she is, who is soon to be conferred as Dr. Nelly Ngongo James. Woo! So we're just waiting for the, for the, for the, for the uh, graduation ceremony. It's where she will be kept. She has already passed her PhD and congratulations to you, ma'am. Um, today we are celebrating women's achievements because we cannot allow ourselves to be absent in our multitude of presence. We are absent as women. Even though we are present, we hold half the South African sky, but often we forget to look at our own milestones and the gains that we have made. I just wanted to also salute all the 12 women that we are honoring today. These are women who have personally contributed in molding my character, in giving me the kind of resilience that I have. I have to tell you something. There's something very funny that happens each time I'm going to have something. There is no electricity in my entire area. So my screen is not lighting and I'm not charging my laptop. I'm hoping I'm, I'm not gonna run out of battery before we finish this session. I thought I should let you know. It went exactly at six o'clock when we were supposed to come online. So I'm getting used to that, so don't worry. So I, I'm, I wanted to talk about specifically about these 12 women and why they are important to us as Wazulu Natal women. And I am saying this because we are faced with enormous challenges in South Africa whether we're talking corruption, and corruption, by the way, is cutting across, it affects every sphere of life. If you have this corrupt government, you must understand that you are actually even destroying our youth. We have a social department, we have a social development department that is not even focused on the issues of easy access openly, in fact, of drugs in Black African townships. Our young boys are being destroyed. In Gauteng, they call it Nyawube. In Wazulu Natal, we are calling it Wunga. It is destroying our children. And nobody is talking about these young, these young, these young men. And these are the men that are going to create a problem for us as women tomorrow. These are the women that are going to refuse to respect us as women and as their equal counterpart in society. Why are we, are we allowing these kinds of things to go on? And that is why we have to honor these women because they represent our collective conscience, moral conscience and moral consciousness as a society. These are the women who chose to stand up even when it was not fashionable to do so. And one of these women 
who has already been quoted by Jillian, uh, Frini Chinuala. She once said when she was asked, when she first became the Speaker of Parliament, and I was a, a, a young girl then, you know, but I was a politician even at that time. When she was asked, um, how are you going to navigate through this space as a, the new Speaker of Parliament as a woman? Um, how are you going to how are you going to set the pace? How are you going to catch up with, with, with what men have been doing? And what she said was so profound. I remember that very clearly as a young um, aspirant politician. She said, my standards are way too higher than those of men. So don't benchmark me against men. So as women, we have to understand that we have to continuously push the button. We have to continuously get better and perfect our art of leading. We are in the space that is highly contested. Politics to some of us who are in the political space is a highly contested terrain. It's a battle of ideas. It's a battle, it's a, it's a space where these battles sometimes can turn toxic. I cannot talk to you today about choosing to challenge without really sourcing my own inspiration from Majoy Mgoi. She is not necessarily in the list of the women that we are awarding today. She was a very successful Black African businesswoman during apartheid days. But she chose, even though she, she lived a life of comfort, she was rich in African township standards, but she chose to challenge the apartheid system because it was evil. In her own words, she said, apartheid and sexism are identical twins born of different mothers, but fathers by the same spare. <laughs> so, and, and she was saying both are systems that are inspired by assuming that I am superior than that other human race group to justify their own, their own selfish ends. So these are systems that are both identical if you look at them closely. And I have to say this because as women, we need to choose to challenge ourselves because I cannot talk to you today and to my president, um, um, to my president um, um, Gaga, and say to you, let's choose to challenge the status quo. Let's choose to challenge the sexism in society, the patriarchal society system, without challenging us as women. Because if we are not going to challenge ourselves as women, we are actually letting ourselves down. I can tell you about my own story when I was in the ANC. When I was in the ANC, I was the spokesperson of the ANC. And it was during the time when the then Deputy President Jacob Zuma was facing rape charges. And I was asked to prepare a speech to defend the then deputy president of the country. I refused. I chose to challenge them because I said, I am a woman. I too am a rape victim. And as Jillian was saying, it is very difficult when you are a woman and you have to confront even the legal system. How do I write a, 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 media, you know, a media statement 
where I am defending somebody who is accused of committing the ultimate, the worst crime. Because you must remember, if you as a woman, you have been raped, you die as a person, even if you leave. And, and your whole, every, it becomes your frame of reference. Each time something happens to you, it, it becomes, it, rape becomes matters arising. Oh, they are coming again. So I am saying, I refuse to do that. And it was women who were outside the courts, ANC Women's League women, they were outside the court defending the accused and not the woman. We have to choose to challenge ourselves as women. What is wrong with us? That is why we now need... That is why we need a new narrative. Apologies, um, Dr. Makosi, please unmute yourself on that side. There was a bit of disturbance there, so apologies for that. Oh, okay. I had the little children. Yeah. Not Everybody, don't worry. Please, please make yeah. sure that when you join in the group, um, please ensure that you mute yourself. Thank you. Over to you, Mrs. Koza. Okay, thank you very much. I'm actually not Mrs. Koza. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Koza. Okay. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm not Mrs. because that's my father's name, Koza. <laughs> okay. So I'm saying let us challenge ourselves as women. Why is it that we make the, the, the more than half of the voters? Yet in Africa, we've had only about two or three women presidents. Why are, we, why are we not looking at our own? Why are we not recognizing the talent that exists amongst us? And it is within that context that today, we are choosing to recognize these women. Women like Nozizwe Madala Rolik, because during the 1980s, these were the women that were in the forefront of the struggle against apartheid. We need it to be the women that are in the forefront against corruption because it is enemy number one of our society today. It undermines the rule of law. When the corrupt becomes so powerful and there is no consequence for corruption, what happens? What happens is that they think that they are above the law and they run away from the law when they have to account. We are saying as Wazulu Natal in action, we can no longer stand by the sidelines and forget the fact that we, we have been given a gift by these women. In fact, the list is endless, but these 12 women that we are honoring today are the women that are saying to us, we are doing our bit. You, as this generation, do your bit too. Each generation must find its own mission. And we have to find our own mission. What is our mission as Wazulu Natal women? And I am saying this because we have been keeping quiet for too long when women have become like, women are being murdered on a daily basis in Guasulu Natal. I'm just going to give you a very ex a good example. All of us, when we became free in 1994, we went to vote and so forth, we celebrated and it's we thought everything was going to be so good. Everything was going to go according to what we expected. Not so. One of our own, a woman who chose to stand up against corruption, 
In 2001, Tutu Pengu, we have not honored her today. Tutu Pengu was gunned down in Guasulu Natal. In 2001, when we already have the Constitution of the Republic, Act 108 of 1996, when we are supposed to be, to have arrived at our destination, where we are, we respect the rule of law. But I can tell you that the perpetrators, some of whom were convicted, are actually enjoying a lot of privileges in prison. They are still treated as if they are political heroes to a point where even some of the top politicians are even visiting them in prison. And as women, we kept quiet. And I'm saying we should no longer be quiet anymore. We need to rise as what, as you were saying, as you were quoting Maya Angelou. We need to rise as women. We are. At the end of the day, we are the ones that must shape the moral fiber of our society. We must define our mission. Hence, today we are saying as, as, as women of KwaZulu Natal, we are establishing this KwaZulu Natal Women in Action because we are saying we are tired of the elf of suffering from the ABC syndrome, which is accused blame, complain, we wanted to act. My president was saying, Monica Mgaga, we needed to start doing tangible things. We needed to have things that we can, we can hold in our hands. We need to use the law. That is, we have a legal dispensation that is very progressive. And it tends to women like Plex Gavenda. And for your own information, Prex Governor is one woman that sensitized even us as women, young women politicians, that we needed to have a, 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 a women-based budget because it was very easy. As a, a local government practitioner, I can tell you now that you go to a municipal during you go to a municipal meeting during a budgeting process. And we have to decide on these competing priorities. Do you want a road or do you want, a wa do you want water? And obviously men would obviously hope in rural areas they will go for, 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 for roads. And why roads? Because most of them, we found that most of them had cars. Women who are used as the mode of transport to go and fetch water far away. Their priority was actually water. That's how we, that's how powerful her model was. It made us sensitive to the fact that we are operating in a highly contested terrain. We have issues that affect us as women that may not necessarily be issues that are affecting our male counterparts. It is our responsibility as women who are in the four, who are, who are whole, who are naturous, who are at home that are supposed to be in the forefront of ensuring that the lives of women are improved. It is within this context that we are honoring these women because these women are saying to us, KZN women, why are you keeping quiet when we continue experiencing political assassinations in Guasulu Nata? And I want to single out one woman who has not been really recognized to the extent to which she was supposed to. And that is Mary Dehaas. Mary Dehaas is one woman who has been consistently reporting on these political assassinations in Guasulu Natal, even going to places where it's very, very dangerous. As Guasulu Natal women, we want to say thank you, Mary, for keeping us informed about how rotten the society we live in is. We cannot enjoy 
our hard earned democratic rights that are enshrined in our constitution for as long as we allow political assassinations that are happening in this province. In this province, when you are a woman and you seem to be powerful, it is very easy not only to kill you, but to not only to murder you, but your children as well and your husband. We already know the case of Victoria Mklenge. We know about Jabunlov. These are women we must never forget about because it, we are basically today trying to say we still have a long way ahead. The struggle is not over. Not so long ago, and I'm talking about the 23rd of December, as I conclude, we had a woman who fought so hard for rural women's rights. Cesar Ningubani, who is amongst the people that we have, we are, we are honoring today. I want to say, shame on you, Guasulu Natal government. ANC led Guasulu Natal government. This woman was died of COVID-19 related complications alone in her house. And Mary De Haas is the one that alerted all of us that Cezanne Lamini is no more. She wrote an article. That's how I got you to know about Cezanne. By the time she was found there, she was already, her body was already decomposing. And we cannot keep quiet when our women have to die that kind of cruel and lonely death. And this woman, by the way, the son phoned, phoned them, the ambulance service, the Department of Health. And he said, my mom is having challenges with breathing. He himself had already tested positive with COVID-19 complications. And he asked them to send, repeatedly asked them to send an ambulance. Nobody sent an, an ambulance. As a result, she died a lonely death. We did not fight for a new South Africa, only to, to, to have a government that is irresponsive, a government that is corrupt, a government that is uncaring. We want a compassionate government. We want a government that is rooted in the spirit of Ubuntu, which is about compassion, interrelatedness, interdependence, and the interconnectedness. We as women of KwaZulu Natal wanted to say to the 12 women today, thank you for what you have done for us. We as Action SA, because Action SA is a different political vehicle. It is a product of a people's dialogue, which was I mean, which was given a mandate by over 2.4 million South Africans who said we need to take power over from the politicians as citizens. However, unfortunately for us to be able to do that, we need a vehicle that is going to be registered with the IEC. So that is why as Action SA, as the chairperson of Action SA, and that is why the Senator um, uh, Gillian Benson is here addressing these issues, this apolitical platform, because to us, we believe that people don't eat political ideas. People want peace, people want prosperity, people want to live in a society where they can live heavily with their family. In that context, I want to say thank you very much for having for having come here today and uh, let us celebrate our women and let's salute them for all the hard work they and the contributions they have made in making us to be where we are today. Thank you. And this All right, guys. What um, is the problem there? I'm not sure. 
please ensure that you are all muted. Okay. Could I please carry on? Yes, Nelly, you may. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Koza. You know, you tell the truth as it is, and you're not scared. And you're saying that we all know, but are too scared to say anything about, or too scared to do anything about. Bravery and your ethics. And, and, and for that, I will always look up to you. Thank you so much. Now, I think we've come to a time where we should actually have a discussion. So I want us to start talking. Um, if there are any questions uh, or any answers or any statements that um, anybody in the panel didn't get to talk about. So um, anybody can go, whoever feels like they have something to add to a, a constructive discussion about what we have been talking about this evening. So does anybody want to start? Can I go? Yes, Luce. Okay, um, I, I think this is a very important uh, initiative. And I was fortunate enough to have to read through the profile of, mo of, of all of these women. And one thing that I can say I found was that, yes, they had political affiliation, but at their core, they, they were passionate about society. They were passionate about their communities. And some of their work transcended beyond that. And I think we are, we've come at a 360. We're at a point where women, we have the opportunity to come together and say, look, politically, we may not agree, but we face the same challenges. We, we, we are not safe in our society. We are not recognized for our work. We are sidestepped. We, we are marginalized. And coming together and saying, let's unite. And I think a lot of people may not understand this. You know, I, I applaud our leadership for coming up with this initiative because a lot of people don't get this. They don't understand that politics doesn't have to separate us. There's more that brings us together than people apart. And I think we should all take this as a personal challenge to go through these profiles and, and step forward and lead KZN and let us be the next 12 women that push KZN forward. Oh, that's great. That's great, Lucy. I agree with you completely. Does anybody else have anything to add? Um, Nelly, can I go ahead? Can um, I come in? Yes, I would love it. Thank you. Um, so basically, for me, it's it's more of questions to um, Gil and Dr. Makosi. So um, as, okay, this firstly goes to Gil. Um, how do we, okay, let me not say how do we, what would you say to young girls? Um, I say this because I'm a young girl myself. So I, I think I asked this question on behalf of many. How would you encourage us to, to fight in terms of close, closing the power gaps within, from, your, from the legal perspectives, how can we close the power gaps and come together in, in terms of fighting the power gaps that I'm referring to in, in the legal field? Well, specifically in the legal field, and you know, I've been doing this for two decades now, um, transformation has come a long way in the legal fraternity. Um, it was very different 15 years ago to what it is now. Um, our racial demographic has changed immeasurably and women have spoken and used their voices and have united. And I think that that is what women have to do in every industry. Don't let them sidestep you or overstep you. Um, and unfortunately, what I think a lot of women often uh, forget is that there's power in numbers. So instead of, you know, um, especially in corporate spaces, I think a lot of women backstab one another and not realizing that you together are going to get further. And I think that 15 years ago, someone like me was too scared to speak up for fear of victimization. Um, and now we, we realize that having the courage to do that really does help. 
And I think whether it's a group of schoolgirls that are dealing with a bully or whether you're in the legal fraternity or any other industry, we have to support one another as women, irrespective of our backgrounds and our racial divides. And I think that that isn't that a problem with the whole of South Africa is that we've been fed a narrative to make us divisive. And we have to combat that, whether it's in the media or social media, we have to disregard and fight um, the, the Twitter things that are said to, to make us alienated from one another. If we don't do it together, we're not going to fix South Africa as a whole. And I think that that's what's so great about Action South Africa and the, the ideology that all of us um, you know, follow and believe in, because if we don't do that, we're not going to fix anything. So yeah, girls just need to get brave. Um, you know, we, we got to use our voices. We're so powerful, actually. Um, and we've got a very different way of looking at things um, in many respects. And we are more compassionate on many levels. We've just got to put that to good use. And we, we can't just cower away. We've got to be brave. Thank you. I think I'm captured. Thank you so much, Phil. Um, speaking of bravery, this is this goes to Dr. Makosi Kosa. Doctor, as a political science graduate myself, um, I know when I was in when I was still doing my undergrad studies, there was this lecture she was always honest to us in terms of studying politics that. Um, unfortunately, you might have to find yourself doing things that you did not want to do because um, the space of the political field for a young girl or for a woman in general, it's difficult to penetrate them. So we have you there, Dr. Makosi, as our inspiration and our hope to say one day we will be able to be where you are, but um, with our hard work and not necessarily having done things that we did not want to do. But what is it being done on a broader level to, to, to throw in the message to young girls in this field to say that um, if you find yourself in this position and you are forced to do something that you don't want to do because you want a job, there's, there are channels that you can use that, that you can go to for assistance or that they can help or institution that can help you um, bring this matter forward or, or, or how do I put it? Yeah, bring this matter forward to the public that this is what's happening because I know for a fact that it's happening to a lot of young girls and women in general in the political field. So what, what, how do you extend that message broadly that you don't have to do this? There are right channels for you to be where you want to be without having done other things. You know, Boy Tumelo, that's a very, very important question that you are asking because we had to go through the same kinds of challenges that you are going through even today. Um, I became a, a deputy mayor of Peter Maritzbeck. I was 26 years old and I was heavily pregnant. Um, and I was already known, I mean, I was already in jail when I was 14, excuse me, but <laughs> I'm saying one of the things that was happening, especially during that time, and um, which is why it's important for us to have a vehicle like the one that we are establishing in Guasulu Natal. And hopefully we need to start having these kinds of forums or these kinds of formations throughout the country where you, you have a space where when you are feeling like you are made to do something that is, that is not right. Like we know, Women, especially young women, they are forced sometimes to having to give other people sexual favors in order for them to get promotion. When we have a structure that is powerful like this, that is not partisan, you are able to even raise those issues and we are then able to act on your behalf and you are then able to become a role model for other women, young women, who may be facing the same challenges. The problem, the biggest mistake, my biggest regret, 
biggest regret, which is why I sat down with Monica and I said, listen, we need to establish a structure that is going to be dedicated on issues that are affecting women. It's because I think the baton that knows this way, Matlala Roich was the president of the Natal Organization of Women in Wazulu Natan. As young women, we knew that when we're facing challenges, because even in the struggle, by the way, we were having serious challenges. Comrades wanted you to sleep with you in order for you to be in the SRC, as a good example. So, so those kinds of things, we had a support system and there were even magazines like Speak Out magazine, Learn and Teach magazines. We had those types of magazines where women, platforms where women were able to channel their frustrations, where they were able to exchange ideas. Today we have social media platforms and maybe I am challenging you, boy to men. Maybe you are that champion that young champion that we are waiting for, that champion who is going to start a movement, a, a movement of young women that is going to start this dialogue. Because this, once this starts dying out, we've seen this happening in South Africa. We stopped with all the organization, the Natal organization of women, the, the women's coalition, a lot of organizations that were there kind of dissipated. You then had your, your I mean, the, 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 well, I'm sorry to say this and, and with my, um, I respect the ANC women's like, uh, women, but the truth is you then have women who are allowing themselves to be used by other by men to pursue their selfish agendas. You can even see this playing itself out. We see men who are severely compromised, who are so corrupt, but they are keeping their positions as president or whatever, as deputies, ministers and whatnot. But when it comes to that very organization to support women or whatever, they were, and when they are supposed to prove that they are dealing with corruption, Women are the first in line. Matabile went, Nomvula Munkanyane went, Zandile, with their sins. I'm not saying we must not punish them, but I am saying if you look at what is happening with Ace Mahashule, Ace Mahashule, again, there is his facing corruption charges. A huge rally is organized during COVID 19 lockdown. When we cannot meet, when you are not supposed to meet as more than 50 people. And it's women too that are there, the leaders. So I am saying there is a lot that has to be done. We need to bring back the correct narrative. We need to champion these uh, platforms and we need to have a lot of dialogues like the ones that we are having tonight. Because if we keep quiet, it is like it's become normal in society. Unfortunately with social change, you just have to keep on pushing the button until you, you, you reach your destination. Well, Tumelo, are you uh, finished? Because uh, I have a question as well. I'm, I'm finished, Nelly. Um, thank you, Doctor. Um, I can only hope and wish that um, your message was sent out clear, loud and clear to young girls, because if, if we are ignorant to such situation, in our generation as leaders, we might still be facing these difficult challenges. And for me, I say this with a heavy heart that um, it's International Women's Day and we should be celebrating um, successes of women. We should be celebrating beautiful things about women, but we constantly find ourselves with the issues of um, the power gap, gender-based violence and sort of everything that, that's just affecting women. So for me, it's, I said, like I said, I say this with a heavy heart, but Thank you so much, Phil, for this platform, and um, I, I've really learned a lot from it. Thank you, Nelly. All right, thank you, Guatemala. Um, For mine, it's more of a comment, and it might come across harsh, and, and Twitter streets may drag me for saying this, but I feel like as a young woman in South Africa, wanting to work hard, wanting to, wanting to help others, 
has always been received with scorn instead of something to be celebrated. And I think it's all the social media, it's how we are defining success for ourselves as women. Um, every time I meet someone, the first thing they say is, what does your husband drive? What does your boyfriend drive? What does that? It's almost like this narrative is destruction. It's like we're being distracted like magpies by gold and, and silver so that we can forget the issues. How can we work together when girls are pulling each other down, when they're competing for men, not for jobs? How can we uh, have young leaders when girls' idea of what success is, is so corrupted? Um, and I, I will say some people who are, what, what would you call them? Um, who are like Instagram celebrities or whatever, they really perpetuate that, that culture that if you don't have a man who doesn't have a car like this, then you're nothing. Nobody is saying, hey, study further. Hey, help your community. That's a cool thing to do. Or help the kids in your community with homework. Everything is so egocentric. Everything is so me, 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 me. And I wonder how as young women we would actually get together and not rip each other down because I, we're competing for things that are just a distraction towards our future. Sorry, but upset. <laughs> just to, <laughs> to, comment, to comment on that, if you don't, uh, Nelly. Um, doctor, I interrupt you, sorry. Um, you know, it's something else that Brita Miller was also saying. How do, you, how do young girls also get further? Now, it's one thing to celebrate our beauty and our sexiness because that's part of who we are and we should be able to do that. But it is also very sad when you look at the Instagram influences, um, specifically in South Africa, or you go on Twitter and young girls will have their boobs all over the show um, it doesn't inspire respect and we need to respect ourselves because otherwise our counterparts are not going to. So like I said, there's nothing wrong with putting a, a picture where you look lovely uh, or you're on the beach in your bikini, but there's a fine line of then making it sexualized. And, you know, we as girls cannot demand respect if, if, if we don't respect ourselves. And I think that that's an important thing that, that women in this country need to learn. Yeah, thank you, Julian. I agree. And this whole concept that's going now is that you must have a girlfriend allowance. So a man must be an ATM. So if he's an ATM and he's buying you, what are you? Um, I, I think it's very important for us as, 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 as women, especially young women, to bring back that uh, consciousness of who we are as women and define ourselves. Let's not be defined by others, by their own expectations and so forth. You know, I'm, I think I'm sounding so ancient. Um, <laughs> during the 1980s, I was young like you guys, you know, and I know that one of the things that we, we, we what was, what defined us then is that we didn't want to be treated as sex objects. We fought that because we wanted you to understand that I am an intelligent being. I wanted you to battle it out with you in the battle of ideas. I wanted to tell you that, you know what? I can make a scientific breakthrough myself. Those were the kinds of things that we're pursuing. We must not, in other ways, we need to start creating that culture. In fact, we need to start influencing these social media platforms, Nelly. And, and Boy Tumelo, because you guys are young, you need to start changing the narrative. We need to start seeing more of young women of substance and character. Like that young girl that was reciting a poem during the inauguration of Bin Laden. Bin, um, what is it? Biden, oh, did I say Bin Laden? No, no, no. <laughs> what, what is it? I think it was I Biden. made a mistake. President okay. of the US. Biden. Biden, Biden, yes, yes. Yeah, I said something strange. <laughs> I, I, it in my tongue. I said something strange, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, we needed to start having women like that. I was so, like when you were reciting the poem by Maya Angelou, I was saying, wow, 
Viva Action SA, Viva Guazulo, Guazulo Natal Women in Action. Because to me, it's saying to me, we are breeding a new, we have a new breed of young women that are coming up, like you, Boy Dumel, that are asking the fundamental questions that have to be asked, that are not so obsessed. Yes, we have to look good. Yes, we have, we are not saying don't look good. You always see me in my lipstick and whatnot, and sometimes makeup and whatnot, and my nail. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is something wrong with us, as Jillian was saying, when we allow ourselves to be sexualized to be wherever we, we appear. And they even go to an extent of pitting us against the other. You know, this whole thing of yellow bone. Um, and women are now going, hey, why bleaching themselves? Because they wanted to be the yellow bone. Because this is a new concept now that is there. Women are no longer happy in their own skins. And those things are detrimental to their health in the long run. So as young women, we are having this particular dialogue today. And you are the leaders of this movement, by the way. We are there to support you. The same way as I was supported, as I'm, I'm saying this, Nosiso Matala Roy, by the way, was a, the president of the Natal Organization of Women. I was so young and I was looking up to her. And, and they were giving us that kind of support to say, go, go forward, go for, you know, keep on pushing that button, you know, and, and they were motivating us. And I think, Jillian, myself, and other women, Vicky and Action SA, we are there to support you. We are there to make sure that you rise. We are there to ensure that you are recognized for what you are achieving already. Hence, I am saying congratulations, Nelly, for being a doctor. Okay, I'll accept it now, okay? I will accept being called doctor. I won't wait for April. All right, um, due to time, I'd like us to have a short discussion about what's happening going forward. Um, like I was thinking, for example, there could even be um, KZN Women in Action Junior League, where young girls on Twitter or on everywhere doing positive things, showing that young people can get involved in their communities. Like that's my idea of something we could start going forward. But I'm sure many of you have many ideas. So um, can anybody tell me anything that you'd like to say in terms of going forward? Because we've spoken about it. We've had our grievances. We've, we're now a collective. Now what? Can I make a suggestion? I mean, I know I'm sitting here in uh, Josie, but I mean, I'm happy to come down with, with the girls, um, you know, and join all of you. And maybe what we need to go do is go speak to, to our girls out there in KZN. Um, you know, I think that um, to a large extent, Gauteng, um, there's, it's easier to reach the people because it's a smaller province. Um, KZN is a huge area and, you know, do we need to go out and show our unification in your rural areas? W what do we need to do to spread the message and start inspiring girls in the province? Agreed. A anybody else? Lucy and Monica, I want them to comment. You've been summoned. Lucy, come uh, on. Okay, what I can say is um, there's a lot of work ahead and we need to we need to find creative ways of reaching women. Um, as you guys are talking, ideas are just running through my head and I, I appreciate the offer that you can come down to Johannesburg. I think that will be phenomenal. Like, you know, what we've been hearing today is unity, 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 unity. Working together, the young teaching the old. And I think that we need to seriously, we, this deserves its own session, have a, a strategic plan to say, where are we going to go? How many people are we going to get? And find places um, where you've got intense number of women, you know, teach younger women, bring them to the forefront, show them that they're more than they've, they've been taught. And we need to have a serious 12 month plan on that, but, doing it together, I do believe it would work. Giving women, whether you want to be a businesswoman, whether you want to be uh, an, uh, an academic, you know, give women that freedom to be what they want to be. And this is so powerful, regardless of where we come from. 
we get, this platform has to give women that opportunity to be what they want to be. And um, I think we need to seriously sit down, Nelly and I, because we're the young ones, we the skibbies, and, and have a plan <laughs> and write down a plan of where we're going, how we're going to get oh, these women. Just uh, for my side, Busi, thank you very much for that fabulous idea. You know, I want us to look at it this way. As KZN women in action, we, we have just initiated this because we were feeling as if women in KZN were not being recognized for their achievements. And um, we thought that women are being silent or forgotten you know, and we don't want them to be forgotten. In fact, we wanted them, one of the campaigns that we have been discussing um, is the structure of KwaZulu-Natal um, Women in Action, uh, the interim structure, because eventually we are still going to have our own constitution and whatnot and whatnot, we are still very new, is that we need to also ensure that the, the, the women, women's contribution, whether it's in science, whether it is in politics, whether it is in whatever, is not just, uh, you know, covered under gender studies, because that's what normally happens. You know, it becomes, it gets quoted here and there in gender studies, but it doesn't make it to the mainstream education textbook or maybe a case study based on a specific woman, because it, you have to conscientize society. Society doesn't just change overnight. So I am saying we need to also link this up with all the different other campaigns because gender issues are cross cutting. Over and above that, this platform was not meant to be a regional platform. As KZN, we just took the initiative, but eventually we would like you to see, you know, South African women in action, how they women in action, and we would like to see women having their structure, because remember, we want to change the narrative. Remember, we are trying to change society. We are trying to reposition ourselves as women in this society, because it's very clear that at the moment we are being defined out of significance. Even though we are enjoying the rights and freedoms that we have today in terms of numbers, but in terms of substantive matters, we are no longer there. The issues that are, are affecting us, the narrative is the narrative that is un, un, undoing us in the process. So I am saying we need to start probably in Gauteng, Jillian, you may even consider a similar platform because we need to have women that are in business to also have network to network because we are also a market as women. If you have products like Abo Busi, Busi is one of our very exciting women. She's, she's, a, she's in the financial services, but now she is in the sector of, um, she has professionalized traditional medicine. And, and she's working with experts. And now you are no longer getting those uh, ugly looking dirty bottles, mooties of traditional herbs she has made them so cool. So these are kind of initiatives I'm saying we must support. And, and there are so many other initiatives that are out there. And if we build this big network of women, we can at the click of the button know who is doing what and we start supporting each other. Even getting you, uh, Gillian, you are a guru in law, you know, and we get our young lawyers and, and so forth, people in the legal fraternity, they come, even if they have to pay a fee as well to come to a session where you are going to be taking them through the do's and don'ts and some of the lessons that you have learned during your, your I mean, during your, your profession as, as a legal person. So I'm saying there is so much to be done and, and let's not regionalize this. This is just an initiative of KZN and as KZN, it's because we love action. So how yes. then copy us, we love that.
I've just messaged Angela in the group. Are we definitely going to get moving because you guys are putting us to shame. You see, and that's the thing about girls coming together um, is such a positive thing and it, it just, it, it'll spread and it'll be good. I'm sorry to cut you off, Gillian. Um, we're actually out of time now. Um, what I'd like to do is if Chantal is available um, to do a vote of thanks, she's from Action SA Mbungundruf. Is she present? Chantal? Okay, well, if Chantal is not present, I just want to say thank you very much for everybody um, joining us. Thank you for the families for um, taking the time. And we just really honor these women who we stand on the shoulders of and our lives would be completely different if they hadn't sacrificed, if they hadn't chosen to challenge. So going forward, let's make it a thing that we choose to challenge. When we don't agree, we choose to challenge. We can be polite, but not silent. Yeah. Nelly, before we go, I want, to, I, want, I want to share just as one testimony from my own personal life. So oh. why sometimes if I'm talking about women, I'm like, maybe I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry, but inside me sometimes I'm, I'm feeling that pain because the women, they themselves down. Why? Because if you come with a good idea, some other widows say, this is not me. Ngula one day, gala the business, ngigiona, jenga man, kila giona, nothing say, gala, what's up? And you get the successful business, and you have a mega, and you should go to Buga Bandes Paza, Abala Lele, or what you get as soon as they in the order, Sikonu Bambisa, and see you go to Sisbe, Ekalen is born at China, Sanga Fagile, who is in the ST, and Kumbulus cutting it all in Sangangans. Engagé we are young people go to LLC. As Asize si fundi sane NKZN with action. Si fundi sane ngeza ma business. Si fundi sane but why kuba leg as women would they involve the police? Si ya dinga. Si neti pati kete fina si la. Si nga yege la abo bakpene. Uguze iso le tulikulega. Si konu kilanga ni yonke indo. Si konu yelega. As men, we must meet up. Day is our day. Viva mbogoto. Watinta Bafal, Watinta Ngabong. Nelly, yes. Nelly, in thanking you, I wanted to thank you uh, for being our fabulous program director. But I also wanted to ask Busi uh, to ensure that we get the addresses of all our awardees because we have to send them their awards. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we couldn't do the ceremony properly. We have some nice awards for them because we think that their families, even where they work and whatever that they do, they need to have evidence that they are being recognized by us. And even the families that have I mean, who have had their parents passed away and so forth, like um, Jabuntlovu, Kopo Masugo, and, and Gange. We also wanted to say to you, it is very important even for their grandchildren to know that their grandmothers, this is what they did. And they are, we are still grateful to what they did and their contribution was not in vain. So that is what I wanted to say in thanking you program director. Thank you. Well, because it's the end and I'm in charge and you guys are a captive audience, <laughs> I am going to end this with another Maya Angelou poem and I hope it's a little bit more sassy to end the evening on a high note. It's called Phenomenal Woman. Pretty woman wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built it's a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my steps, the curl of my lips. I am a woman phenomenon. 
phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk in a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of bees. I say, it's in the fire in my eye, the flash of my teeth, the swing of my waist, the joy in my feet. I am a woman phenomenal, phenomenal woman. That's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I am a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman. Now you understand why my head's not bowed down. I don't shout or jump or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say it's the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care, because I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, We've had a lovely evening and I hope that you enjoyed and you will try be part of action um, um, of our women in action or even actually say if that's what you want. But yes, the doors are wide open for any woman from anywhere. We love you. Every day should be Women's Day. <laughs> Thank you.